thank you today for allowing me again to do something that I want to do and am excited about doing this, getting into your word. This is my favorite time of the day. And I thank you for things being as well as they are. And thank you for being my God and my God. You promise never to leave me, never to forsake me. And help me to be the type of woman that represents you in every way that I know how. And in my endeavor to do that. Thank you for your wisdom and thank you for your correction. And thank you for being the, the teacher of life. And show me how to grow in you. Um, thank you for forgiving me of my sins. And help me to forgive those who have sinned against me. In Jesus name. Amen. I'm in a book today. And it's, if anybody's ever read chapter. Um, I had to get my, my laptop today. Because this book is very. Um, it, 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 it's, it's, it's like a. Um, like if you were taking a math class and you got to go to a different, um, a different step in the problem, uh, chapter 15 is going to be different. And I thought I was in the right place. So as I tried to find the right place, how did I get here? I do not know. But anyway, chapter 14 um, I'm, I'm on my computer today, so it's a little bit different. And I'm trying to see why this thing is not working with me. Oh, okay. All right, I see what it's doing. All right, chapter 15, it tells us uh, what happened in chapter 15. It's a continuation of what was in chapter 14. All right, in chapter 14, there was a man, or the guy that we're going to talk about name was Jeroboam. And Jeroboam uh, sent his wife because his son was sick. And he said, I need to know how this boy is going to do. Now, Jeroboam had a relationship with God. But he decided to deviate from God's plan. God's plan was every seventh month, I want y'all to worship and come together for a, 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 a feast. But Jeroboam said, we ain't going to do it every seventh month. We're going to do it every eighth month. All he did was, if, if the recipe called for three cups of sugar, he said, I ain't going to put the two in there. But I'm going to sell it for the same price as three. So what he did was he was deviating from God's plan. God's plan is very simple. He gave it to Moses. Moses wrote it down. And Moses has been dead now for at least, at least 500 years. So now we got the kings carrying out all, the, all of what God told Moses to write down. Because he said, those are my words and it's not going anywhere. So Jeroboam decides... God has given me this position. I don't necessarily want to look bad in the eyes of the people that I'm going to lead. So he did something to create his own God. He got them two calves and he had people worshiping idols and then taking, stealing God's ideas, but just modifying it a little bit, which this time God broke is breaking up the children of Israel and putting them out of that land called the land of promise because they just gone to the point I can't do nothing with it. You can't keep staying in my house and you're not paying your house note. You just can't stay here and not pay your rent and do what I say do as the landlord. So we got this guy named Jeroboam. Jeroboam's son got sick so he told his wife, he said, I need you to disguise yourself and don't go out as my wife. I need you to put on something to represent that you're not the king's wife. And so, and then God saw his strategy, so he gave heads up to the prophet and told him who was, couldn't see. He said, Jeroboam is sending his wife and she's going to have an outfit that she's going to try to pretend she's somebody else. He said, but I'm going to tell you what she's going to do and this is what I want you to tell him when, she, and when you hear her feet come to the door. 
So she walks up to the door and the sound came to the ears of the guy who couldn't see. He said, hey, Sister Jeroboam, I know that's you and you got an outfit that don't belong to you. And come on in and let me tell you because you're not going to like what you got, what you're getting ready to hear. He said, now you go back home and tell your husband, since he sent you here, that he's getting ready to be removed off the earth and everything that's connected to him, whether it be nine months, 10 years, 100 years, 200 years, 300 years, everything that's concerning him is getting ready to die. Everything that pisses, pisses, or pisses on the wall, against the wall. In other words, every male child going to die. And um, you can go on back home and tell him, and then I'm going to let you know something else. That boy, you came here to get a word from the Lord to see whether he's going to live, he's going to die today. And he said, now go on back home with your pretending outfit on. And as soon as your feet hit the door, your son is going to die. That happened in chapter 14. What happens is, it might if you walk in on a chapter like this and it's your first time seeing it, it seem, and a lot of people who don't read the word will pull something out of that word and say, it just don't seem right. Well, let me ask you this. If I said it didn't seem right because I walked in the movie and, and they on 1 Kings 15 and it started, started in Genesis 1. Do I have the right to say that the movie is not right because I don't like the part I walked in on? God had already explained to Jeroboam not to go down that road. He had already told him to kill all your boys. All Jeroboam had to do was change his mind and start following God's word. And what do we do? God can tell us over and over again, don't do that. Don't keep stealing. Don't keep stealing. Don't keep stealing. Don't, don't rob from the company. Don't rob from the company. Your family going to be in trouble. They're going to need you. But you just keep doing it. Then finally you get caught. Now you got to go to jail. And now you're wondering why somebody walked in on the movie and they just see your kids at home when you had all them warnings not to make that decision, but you wouldn't stop. Or it might be God is, you know, you got a disease on your body where God says, stop sleeping with that man. Stop sleeping with him. And then somebody walk in on when you got the disease, not knowing that you had plenty of time to change that. So God is right and just in everything that he does. Even if you walk in on chapter 15, when he started in chapter, let's just say he started first King chapter one. He told this guy that, and this is what God told him. If you do what I say, that same boy that's going to die, I'm going to make him king. But what Jeroboam did was he doubted God's word. And his child is one of the, all his boys are going to lose their life. But this particular boy in chapter 14, God said, I saw some good in him. Well, I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself because I'm going to read that today. No, that was yesterday. He said, I see some good potential in this guy. I see it even though he's not the king, but I know that he, he's one of those children that would just kind of check you in a very respectful way. And God liked the way the boy was going, but he said, but he got to die. And, but he just going to have one of them big old funerals. Everybody going to miss him. He said, but the rest of your kids going to be like just, they're not going to even get a, a graveside funeral. The dogs going to eat their flesh or the birds, according to their location. If they're in the country, they're gonna, birds going to eat them up. And if they're in the city, the dog going to eat them. And all you got to do, Jeroboam, to keep your family from doing this, because God is saying, I, I, you know, like we go to court, we hold up our hand, and we say, God, so I'm going to keep my word. I'm just letting you know your fate. Change your mind and have what you want that is good. Or don't change your mind, and then you mislead people think I did you wrong. Because what I'm trying to get you to do, Jeroboam, is stop hurting people. And since you don't, I don't want nothing that looks like you brought up to earth to last. And Jeroboam said, I hear you, but oh, well, I ain't changing. So we get into chapter 15, because when people don't change, God doesn't change either. We don't change, God doesn't change. He said, My, he said behold, I set before you good and evil. Choose you this day which one you're going to serve. Evil part, I'm going to tell you what you're going to get. When I told Moses, he said, if you go back and check the word, 
and what I told Moses to write, you'll know that I'm not telling you something new because it happened today. I told you on this day, this is going to happen. When it happened, I kept my word. You would never have to call me into counsel about something I said. If you did the right thing, I'm going to bless you. And if you don't do the right thing, I'm going to curse you. Those are words we don't use because they just don't, they just, we don't want to hear that. Well, we might not want to hear, but it's God's word. And he said, yesterday, only pagans go into the word of God and pull out the good. All the good stuff. He said, I said both. I'm just like the, the account at the bank. You got something negative or positive. It wouldn't be right if the bank just said, well, I just let you know when you got money in the bank, but then you keep spending knowing you don't have anything. And you, they didn't tell you. Then now you wonder why your car not working. Because the bank said, I informed you that you don't have any money in the bank. You're supposed to know this so you can make a decision. So God was very clear. He's not one of those managers that's trying to keep people. He said, you don't want to live, then you can die. He said, but I want you to live. I want you to be a part of everything good. In fact, I want you to live with me. But you, got, you just got to follow my instructions. I don't talk much. I just mean what I say. So now we're going into a chapter that is going to be very interesting. Let me set you up on how this story answers. When you go into 1 King 15, you are going to need the book of Chronicles. Because they are, it's like, First King has the coat. Uh, first and Second Chronicles aligns with First King, but it has the buttons and the gloves and the, all the details of the coat. So when I was reading First King, it was interesting because it sort of switched you up a lot. And then it uh, says, it, and then it will ask a question. Said, "Don't you know? Did you not know that First uh, Chronicles says this?" So that's a hint to tell you to go check out Chronicles, because it's more to this story than King First Kings is saying. Chronicles give you more details. In other words, if you ask somebody how the food tastes, and somebody might say good, and then you say somebody else might say Chronicles would say it was not only good, it was expensive. But the manager was nice. It just gives you more details of surrounding what somebody else might just say it was good without all the extra details. Because this is how we're learning to read the word. At least this is how I'm learning. You read it, but then there are some books that you need both books to get the full picture. You can read First King, but you'll just get a better understanding when you get to first, when you get to Chronicles, because when you get to Chronicles, you're gonna say, "Well, let, let me go back." You might go, you might drive, and then get to Chronicles, and then realize, "Oh, I need to go back and pick that up." So God is good with that. This is just for people that might get in here and um, kind of look like it's just more meatier in 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 the Chronicles. Another thing about this chapter, you're going to go drive, you're going to get in your car. You're going to, you're going to push the button to come on, or however you get your car. We used to turn the key, now you push a button, and some, some of them, I don't know how they drive. But anyway, when you get in this book right here, you're going to go forward, you're going to have to put it in reverse, and then you have to stay, stay in neutral. Because in order to understand this book right here, uh, you just got to you, you got to be patient. Let me tell you what happened to me. When I taught mathematics, when a problem, I mean, you got a kid, this may work for you. If your grandchild or your child does not know how to solve a word problem, take the font and blow it up. Make it comical looking. Same words in the a, in a, in a, in a attorney's view, like you're an attorney, you can read it like that. Take that same word and blow it up as big as you can get it. Then reread it. It's going to be like a kindergarten picture. So when you get into books that you are intimidated to read in the word of God, blow the fun up. Make it bigger. Don't change anything. Now they got all kind of versions, but I would be careful with that. But anyway, even if you chose a version that might say it, get you more than one just to make sure. 
But blow that fun up and have fun in the Word of God. Read it. I'm just trying to show you. Because last night I came in and the Lord, I, 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 I copied and pasted. And I was looking at it. And I said, oh, it's so big. And then when I read it, because I had read it one time or listened to it. And I, it was, it was kind of running me in different places. But the truth is, once you read it in, in, in kid font, make it big enough for a child, then it will be easier to read. So don't be intimidated by it the word when you read it and you don't understand it. Blow the fun up. And then go back and see how easy it is. God made for this to be easy. And it is. Alright, so now the boy dies. And I may not be pronouncing the name right. I say Abajam, but I heard a man says Abaham. They don't pronounce the J like we do in the Western world. Abaham. So if I say Abajam, the same person that I'm saying, because I use J when I see it, just like a uh, uh, some of my students' name was uh, Jose. They didn't call the J. They just said Ho. So anyway. First King 15. Let's go through with this. And it's going to be very interesting. And we are going to see ourselves. Alright. The first person we're going to talk about is. I will say New King James in chapter 15 is better than King James for reading's sake. I like King James because it makes me dig for words. New King James sort of fix it so I don't have to dig so hard. But anyway, let's, this is the one I studied from. In the 18th year of King Jeroboam. Now watch how God is saying this. In the 18th year of King Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, Abraham became king of Judah. Watch how God said that. He starts out saying, in the 18th year of this king, this king became Judah. Two different places. Now, I'm going to make it plain. Please do not get offended. And I'm not trying to make color an issue. But in our world, we relate to people by color. And it seems to get the message across a little quicker. Because you got one color that just don't like the other color. All right, in the 18th year, King Jeroboam was my white brother. While he had been in, 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 in position, the white, I got to say it like this. I am not talking about color. But because it makes sense to make it easy, I got to talk like that for me so I can relate to people that may not see it. This is, has nothing to do with color. Because these same people, black and white, was this close. There was a time when everybody got along. But then there, became, then there came a split. And the best way to see it is how, do, how does a family split? We're getting ready to learn how they split. In the 18, when I say Jeroboam, I'm talking about the majority of the people who represent today. I'll just try to say Jeroboam. In the 18th year of King Jeroboam, the bad king, I, I call him like that for right now. Abraham became king of Judah. So Reho, uh, uh, um, uh, Rehoboam is dead now. He left a son. I let, now I got to tell you who that is. Solomon. Okay, we got David. Then, then David dies. Then Solomon takes his place. Then Solomon dies. Then Rehoboam takes Solomon's place. And then Rehoboam dies. And this boy named Abraham takes Solomon's place. So we got, we got this boy right here is the king. This is David. So we still going to say the David side, David people. So this little boy right here, Abraham is the king. God brings him up during the 18th year of Jeroboam. Jeroboam is the bad king. He's the crooked king. He's the one that God said, I'm going to wipe your whole seed off the, off the earth. So this is Jeroboam. And I say this is um, Judah. Or the one that Jesus came through. This was the one that did not do what the word said do. And this was the one that, that David was their daddy and they didn't have but one King David. This one over here had many kings. They had, I think, nine dynasties. They had nine people over a period of time. 
until Jesus came. This right here was a confusion of, the, of, of, of what we call the church or the children of Israel. This one right here, God had his eye on this because they were more, uh, they were smaller. Well, they, they weren't 10. This was 10. I don't know if this one was the same size. Or this one just split up in 10. This one right here had a lot of issues. This one right here, this, these people right here fought this one right here. So when you hear me say Judah, we're talking about the tribe that Jesus came through. When you hear me say Jeroboam, we're talking about the religion. So we're talking about Jesus and we're talking about religion. I guess it might be the best way to say it. So this, so the, so uh, uh, Jerusalem, he reigned the good guy. I got to say it like that for right now. I wish I had some pictures to show you. He reigned three years in Jerusalem. This boy, this man, his mother's name was Micah, Micah, the granddaughter of Ash, Abishalom. This was the first time they really start, you know, most time the word of start said, and his dad was him and his dad was here, but God got a little switch right here. And I'm not sure why he brought up the mamas and, 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 and brought that up, but it could be. Them daddies was no good. Some of them. Solomon. Uh, Rehoboam, Reboam, Reboam, oh Lord, am I saying the guy named Reboam? And he went, he said, I'm talking about the mamas and the grandmamas. That's how he did it on this one right here. He reigned three years and then God gave his relatives, he said his mother, his name was Mecca, and his granddaughter, and she was the granddaughter of Abishalom. Abishalom. That's all we know about this boy who's reigning three years. Now, this boy on, 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 on the good side, if I say it like that, and I'm on, on this side, and he walked in the sins of his daddy. He walked like Rehoboam, Rehoboam. And he walked in the sins of his father, which he had done before him. He saw his daddy do it, so I'm doing it. Got many wives. He did some things right. But he had women too. And he walked in all the sins of his father, which he had done before him. His heart was not loyal to the Lord his God, as was the heart of his father David. When they say David, they just said David's great grandchild. They still call him David, just so we'll know that this seed came from David. He said, he ain't that right. Nevertheless, for David's sake, the Lord said, I'm going to keep a light in Jerusalem. David act right. I'm going to always look out for David. David is dead, but he did some good stuff. So what God is saying that when you do right, I'll run it through your family. Because every time I look at your grandchild, I'm going to think about how nice you were to your neighbors. Nevertheless, for David's sake, the Lord said, I'm going to keep a lamp in Jerusalem by setting up his son after him, establishing Jerusalem. He said, now, boy, you ain't no good. But inside of you, you're going to give birth to a son that's going to be some good. So God said, I see you. Can't use you because you, you keep messing up. But you're going to have a son, and I'm going to use your son. And this is God said. God knows what's on the inside of each one of our eggs, our sperms, the sperm of a man, the egg of a woman. God said, I know what you carry. It's some good in you because I know David got a seed that I, he may not have ran through you, but he's going to run through your son. So I'm going to let you live. And, you, and he reigned three years. And then, he, then his wife gave birth to the next son. Who God has said, that's the one I want. I just wait three years. Because you ain't right. You do something right. See, when we do some things right. And then something we know are not right. Then God said, it's all the same. You ain't right. I mean, you did say thank you. I can at least say you polite. But you did everything behind folk back that you, I can't. I ain't can't. I'm just going to be honest. You're just not a good leader. I mean, you might have paid your tithes, but uh, I'm just saying that. But you lied and you got babies all over the church. You know, good leader. And this way, this guy was basically I'm trying to paint the picture. So. 
Abajam has, I say Abajam and Abham. He had a son. Nevertheless, David said, he said, I'm going to keep my word to David through you, but I'm going to get you out of the way. And then you hurry up and get him, and y'all have a baby for me because I'm going to use the next child. That way he did Adam and Eve. I had Cain and I had Abel. Cain killed Abel. He said, Adam, need another baby. And then he started, he had another baby. Until he got the one that he knew could do the job. Because God said, I know what's in you. Why y'all making law to kill the king that's in you, you don't even understand. I had already planned for that boy that you just aborted to be the one to get y'all out of that situation. But I know these things. Now we got to wait a little longer. Because David did what was right in the eyes of the Lord, and he turned not aside from anything that he commanded him all the days of his life, except the time David spent plotting, trying to kill Uriah. That's the only thing God got to check by his name saying. But then when I called him to the carpet, he said, I did it. First, he didn't know it was him. And then the prophet said, boy, you the one that I'm talking about. And David said, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm wrong. <clears throat> All right. So we got the two family members, the black people and the white people. The word says, and there was war between Rehoboam and Jeroboam all the days of his life. All this boy knew was fight. His daddy was fighting. Jer Jeroboam was fighting Rehoboam. Rehoboam was the good guy and Jeroboam was the other guy. And they feuded all the time, just like we do in the United States today. We still fighting over something that they already fought over. We still fighting over, you don't look like me. Your nose wide, your nose, your nose pointed. We, we, we doing the same thing. Nothing new. He said, but the next, the, the rest of the acts of Abijam and all that he did, are they not written in the book of Chronicles? That's why I said, this, the word would tell you when you need to go search further. That's why we have to read the word in order. It's telling you, go check out the book of Chronicles to get all the details between Jeroboam and um, his son, Abijam, Abijam. A-B-I-J-A-M. He said, go check out uh, uh, Chronicles. And what you'll find out, because I checked it out by listening to somebody, but when I did my homework, I didn't know why they stuck that in there. I'll be honest with you, I didn't. Then I learned that that meant for you to go check out the details. Uh, Jeroboam did some things that was good. He just did not do everything that was right. What that means is you can do good, but and you can be, how do you be perfect in God? We say nobody's perfect. That's not what the word says. He told you to be perfect. You say, hey, can't nobody perfect. We say that all the time. It's a relaxing word. It's letting you know that I make mistakes. God is saying, that's not what I'm talking about. He said, a perfect man will admit when he's wrong. He said, a perfect man would use the eraser on the internet pencil. A perfect man would go forward and then he could put it in reverse. He says, nothing wrong with what I made. If I say I want you to be perfect, I meant that. That means follow instructions. If you did a job and you didn't do it right, do it over. Complete it. Has nothing to do with bragging on your goodness. The only somebody that's good is God. Perfect says... You be perfect because you're supposed to do what I say do when I say it. And if I say go back and apologize, get up and go do it. You are perfect for what I called you for. It's not for you to compare yourself with somebody else. And I ain't perfect. That's just what you're really saying is I ain't no good. I don't want to do it over. But a perfect man would say that I, I told you a lie. And I came to admit that I lied. And God said, that's a perfect man. He can be trusted. Ain't got nothing to do with that man-made definition that we have told ourselves that somebody do something wrong. I ain't perfect. No, you, what you did was you just got somebody pregnant. You don't have to add God's word in there to say, yeah, I'm not perfect. God said, no, you, you walking, you ain't nothing. You know, you're not honest. It's just another word for being honest. Now, the rest of the acts of, of this, of Abijah, Hey, let me call you back. I'm online. I'm live. I'll call you right back. Now, the rest of the acts of Abijah and all that he did, are they not written in the book of the Chronicles of the Kings of Judah? He said, if anything else that you lack, and check out Chronicles, and it'll give you the details of this guy. 
And there was war between Abidjan and Jeroboam. So we got the black people and the white folk fighting. White church fighting the black church. So Abidjan rested with his fathers. He died and they buried him in the city of David. Then Asa, his son, ran in his place. So now he got this son that God saw. I'm waiting on that boy. You, is your wife pregnant yet? Oh, it's a boy. That's the one of you. So Asa is born. All right. Then he goes, then the camera switches. We got the good side. We got the, we got the black side. I'm not calling you good because you're black. Now, that's not what I'm saying. I've just got to call you because Jesus is going to come through this side. And I'm just trying to let you see the difference between black good. Just anything that I can use. So we got uh, Asa's side. Now he's, he's taking the king of, of, of David's side. We got David's side. I'd rather say it like that because I don't want nobody to be offended. We got David's side. And now we're going to go over here to the religious side. In the 20th year of Jeroboam, religion, king of Israel, Asa became king of Judah. Look at God saying this. He said, I'm doing this and this. I'm talking about this and I'm talking about this. Let me tell you why. God is no longer the focus of the children of Israel. When God speaks of the difference of going from Jeroboam's side to Rehoboam's side to David's side to Asa's side, he said, that's never been my intent. He said, but when the, when the church move away from my word, you get chaotic. He said, if I, didn't, if I didn't move by somebody to tell you what was going on, he said, you couldn't understand what them people were doing. He said, but I'm God and I saw it. It's confusing, but it's right. Because no longer am I speaking and the people doing. You got this one speaking over here. You got this one speaking over here. You got this bad king over here. You got this kid that's trying to do You got to learn all of that. He said, that's what religion does. When they walked away from me, the chapter of the way is written, is written in a way to confuse you. And if you don't have the light on, you won't know what's going on. But he said, but I'm God. I don't care how out of order you get. I know who did it, when you did it, who you did it to, how much money you took. He said, I can read all that chaos. He said, I was taking good notes. But when you teach this book, you just got to keep your ears open because I'm going to be talking over here and be talking over here and I'm going to be talking. He said, I ain't going to miss a beat. That's how that book was written. Because this is the first time that Israel told God, bye. And the ones that was trying to do right just kept tripping, just like we do today. We have a heart to please God, but we ain't doing everything right. We just got to admit it. Stay perfect. You got to say, I got to be honest with you. I did this. So that's what's going on. The reason why it sounds like it's Jeroboam and then it's Rehoboam and then it's Ace. All them gods I never meant for you. For number one, I told you I need no king. But you ain't listening to me. I said, all you need is what I say because other than that, it's going to be he said, she said, by the time you get it, you ain't going to know who said. But God has said, but since I'm God, I took notes. You just got to, you just got to walk with it. So what does God want us to do? Don't do this. Don't have all these different churches saying all this crazy stuff. Because he said, they, I don't care what you say. I'm writing down every word. I can keep up with the order. But if, but if, but if, you, ask one, if you ask a human being to tell y'all what's going on, they're going to say, I don't know. Look crazy to me. I, I tell you what, I just ain't going to church no more. Too confusing. But this chapter right here will just tell you what happened when religion took over. All right. So in the 20th year of Jeroboam, king of Israel... Asa became king of Judah. You, I would, I would think like, Lord, why you just say Asa became the king of Judah without even bringing up the other guy? He's because I want, I want you to see both sides at the same time. The confusion. You're supposed to be one. Now you split. Now I got to talk about both of y'all at the same time. And he reigned 41 years in Jerusalem. Asa, the good king, the one that God saw. Now, I call him good because God said, let me let God say it, but then we go to Chronicles, you're going to say, that the same guy? But let's check it out. And he reigned 41 years in Jerusalem. His grandmother's name was Mekah, the granddaughter of Abiyashalom. I'm just going to tell y'all who his grandmama was. The word says, Asa did what was right in the eyes of the Lord, as did his father David. He came in there and he banished. This is what they, Asa, Asa, Asa did. Okay, Asa's daddy 
since we think we knew in the United States, they had abortion laws, they had homosexual laws, they did the same thing that we're doing. They made a law out of everything. They turned their head when they didn't know the right thing, but say, I ain't see it. They know who killed the man, and he was, that was I know who did it, but I ain't, I ain't getting off of that. They did all of that. Everything that we doing in 2020 was happening right here. But this guy named Asa won the election. And he said, I'll do it right, God. And he came in. What did he do? He banished the perverted person from the land and removed all the idols that his father had made. That's not how King James said. That's how new King James said. Because now we're scared to say what the word says. So I'm going back into 1 Kings 15. So I got my computer and my Bible at the same time this time. I want to read that verse. What verse is that? Verse 11. This is what the 11 verse said. The 12th verse. Asa got the job which was right in the act and did right in the eyes of the Lord. What did he do? He took away sodomites. They didn't say that in New King James. We don't really want to say that because we're tired of trying to explain to people that homosexuality ain't the only thing that people doing wrong. There was uh, sodomites. There was men selling themselves and they were committing homosexuality. And all other kind of sins that we do. But, they, but this one, is, this, that sin has been one that's been around a long time. When Asa became king, he took away the Sodomites. They had voted it in. He said, not up under my watch. He went up, he went in there and got that presidency or that government position and said, y'all taking that law down. And he took away the Sodomites out of the land and removed all the idols that his father had made. My daddy did that. He told him that it's all right to vote. You can marry who you want. You can, vote. You can, you can sleep with a dog if you want to. Whatever they did, he said, you can't. And he was the king. He was the, he was the president of the United States. Israel. We got to stop weakening this word because people get lost about what it really mean. It meant that if you sodomize and the same thing that happened that God didn't like, still don't like, he said, I didn't create you for that. Anyway, that's a whole different story. I just read that right there. That's all I'm going to say. I had to make sure I clean, clean that up because I was like, where's the word that I really read? Asa did what was right in the eyes of the Lord. He went down there and broke them laws down that they had made by his daddy. And Solomon, they had, he said, we ain't finna do that. Ain't no man finna sleep with no man. Ain't no woman finna sleep with no woman. Ain't no dog finna marry no woman. We ain't doing that. We ain't doing nothing new. This just the words. So, I mean, I'm just saying what happened. This history now. And he banished, put away that person from the land and removed the idols that his fathers had made. We would do the same thing if we knew the data of my cousin dying with AIDS. My one of a lot of my friends dead with AIDS. Oh, you can't be talking about this. The truth. You talk about fat people. You tell the truth on that. So you can't be partial and say, "Well, I ain't gonna." You don't need to talk about that because you did just make people feel fun. I, do you think I feel good when you say you need to lose seventy five pound? Got to take it. Part of part of living better. That's why I, I'm cutting back on my eating. My son said, "Mommy, like you losing weight." We'll see. Anyway, I'm just telling y'all that we got to stay with the word. We don't run this thing. But you definitely got to say what God said. You can't make people do nothing. But that guy came in and said, we ain't finna have that law up there. We ain't finna be killing them babies. We're going to call you out. And that's what he did. And God said, I like you. And he banished a perverted person. And guess what happened when they stopped sinning? They started flourishing. They started acting right. People started being nicer. Because they ain't trying to hide and they ain't sleeping with your husband while he said, I'm sleeping with your wife. All that foolishness, that confusing stuff. We had order. That's all God is, order. I mean, you can't get no business. God is saying, I ain't going to, homosexuality, uh, sleep with a woman, husband, um, two women sleep together, a man sleep with another woman that's not your wife. He's all of it is, is, is wrong. Every bit of, but y'all don't make no law out of adultery, but you made a law out of same-sex marriages. All are wrong. So stick with the word. And he said he removed the idols that his father had made. And I ain't going to keep up with this sin just because my daddy started. This is wrong. My dad had been writing checks in the church and letting everybody know that I paid a thousand dollars and then telling the secretary, tear that check up while everybody else paid a thousand. He said, my daddy did that kind of stuff. I don't do that. I called him out. I looked at the books. I said, Daddy, how come your bank account said that $1,000 that you wrote that check for Sunday that it didn't go through? 
The secretary said, I know why I did, because he told me to tear it up. God said, I, I left why I like Asa, because he don't play. Also, guess what else he did? Asa, this the boy that on the on on the on the on Jesus side that's he gonna come through. Also, he removed Mecca, his grandmama. I told y'all we don't make gods out of our grandmamas. This boy came in and said, Grandma, you ain't finna do that mess. He removed grandmama from being queen mother. He said, you ain't, ain't nobody finna recognize you being no queen with that mess you doing. Because she had made an obscene image of a goddess. A god that's not God, Asherah. And Asa cut that thing down and burned it and put it in the garbage or somewhere so close to the garbage. He says, he says I don't even want it to burn it up. Who did that? Your grandmama. I, I can't run with. That's what made him right with God. He didn't care about who you were. He said what God said, and that was it. I don't care if my daddy sanctioned homosexuality. I don't care if my grandma out there selling sex toys. You're wrong, grandmama, and I ain't backing my daddy up. God said, that's my kind of person. But the high places were not removed. Uh-oh, he didn't do everything. Now, when you go to Chronicles, it says that he removed those obvious high, high places that were speaking against God's word. He said, but some of them churches up there that they done built, some of them folk up there trying. They just ain't got everything. Yeah, they're immature, but they're the kind of church that you want to be a part of because at least they'll say when they're wrong. At least they start back over and say, we got to go back and read this word because we ain't right. But the other one said, no, nah, we're going to do it like this. That's the way, this is the way I believe. And you, I ain't got to believe like you. Can I marry you even though you don't believe like me? He said, but no, nah, he didn't take down all the high places were not removed. Nevertheless, Asahar was loyal to the Lord all his days. How do you be loyal to God? You tell the truth. You don't take this word and start saying, I don't really want to talk about that because, you know, we ain't under the old covenant. We under, you are under the old covenant. Even though the new covenant is available, we live just like our outfit look just like these people right here. This was written a thousand years ago. I mean, no, this 2000. So this is a thousand years before Jesus was born, right? 900 years. And this is how we were living. And it looked just like today. Oh, I ain't through. But the high places were not removed. And this is what we should have known as soon as they said, it's a girl. It's a, in other words, as soon as your, our mamas had us, we were supposed to know this word. It took us three years of learning. And by the time we went to school at five years old, we would have been straight. But they didn't give us this. They just told us uh, the farmer in the day. We learned that and we still know it. Mary had a, anything to keep your eyes off the truth. A baby is ready for this. Now I know today's babies are. Ask my granddaughter. She know everything else. She see all. She, we went to a restaurant and the guy came and he had a, you know, was acting a certain way. She said, Grandma, is he gay? Well, nobody in the restaurant but me, her, and him on the outside. He heard her. That's what she said. I ain't say what I said. I ain't know whether that guy, I, I, I did everything I could to tell her to be quiet. But she was, I'm saying she's exposed to all of that. She's exposed to, to the conversations of not just my granddaughter, but kids are exposed. They don't know nothing about abortions, but they know the name. It's familiar to my, I don't know what that means. But I hear, I, hear, I hear it enough to know it means something. Grandma, what that mean? And then we can't tell them what the word said. They own the computer 24-7. They looking at everything and they know how to flick it off when you come and know how to ignore you when you say get off that computer and act like they don't hear you. Ah, oh, we setting it up. But the high places were not removed. Nevertheless, Asa's heart was loyal to the Lord God. I work for God. I don't call the shots. I just do what he say. And what I didn't do, he told it on me and I ain't do it. He also brought into the house of the Lord the things which his father had dedicated and the things which he himself had dedicated, silver and gold and utensils. So he said, let me get this stuff back in because the um, Egyptians came in and, and, and they started fighting the children of Israel. Children of Israel had it so straight. 
Nobody could touch them without God's eyes. I said, these my kids. You better back off. God was one of them parents that went to school and said, look, I don't, I don't take up with my son when he's wrong. But if, he, if he's not wrong, I'm going to need to know why you do my child like that. God said, I ain't had them kind of, I mean, he would do, but God was like, I don't do that. I don't even let you get to the school starting them. I ain't even going there. I, I, I'm smart enough not even have my kid in that school. I'm going to make sure that who's going to teach my kid going to sound like me. Because they just need to confirm what I said. So, but Asa, he, he went out and he bought the gold and the silver the utensils back into the house after the Egyptian had stole a lot of it. But they hid some of that stuff. And he said, I can bring that back. Now, there was war between Asa and Basha. Now, Asa doing all this good stuff. And that's what Chronicles come in. But this man named Basha wanted to fight Asa. Bad guy trying to jump on. Now, he, he's not even the king. He's just a bully. He's just somebody who just ain't got nothing to do but make bombs and blow people up. And he came over there to get Asa. And Asa all of a sudden, I'm trying to do it. Just do what the word told me to do. And now I got to put up with you. So Asa gets on his phone. I just ordered me a phone because I can't be holding my hand like that. I said, I got to have me a prop. And Basha, king of Israel, came up against Judah. So Basha walking up in on the good people and want to fight me. And he's not even, he's, 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 a, they, all of these are brothers. All of these people are the children of Israel, part of them. This is not the Philistine. This is not the Canaanite. Now they might've married some of them for them got all twisted up. But these are people that God taught handmade from God. And they decided now all we got to do is put over with fight, just like we do today. Everybody fighting everybody. You, you a lady, you pray without your head covered. Anything. We say, you got on ear and women ain't, we anything. Fight me and, I'm, and at the end of the day, I'm still your brother. We came here the same way as a girl. All of us came here with nothing on. And guess how we going to leave here? We ain't going to know we ain't got nothing on because we, it ain't, it don't mean nothing. And Basha, king of Israel, came up against Judah and built Ramah. So this guy said, I'm finna build me something to stop these folk. That he might not let them go in and out. He sees that place. I'm not going to let them bring no Chinese food to their house. And ain't nobody going to go out and go buy none. I ain't going to bring no export, import. Ain't none of that going to happen. So Basha said, I'm getting ready to watch Asa. But you got to know who worked for, who Asa, Asa worked for. Asa put his grandmama in place. Asa told his daddy, said, you're going to cut them laws out that don't line up with the word. And you think God ain't going to back this guy up? I don't care if Asa did do something wrong. God said, I'm going to back you up. You stood for something right. So Basa sat there and he said, I'm going down and put a toll road up and we're going to watch them and we'll shoot them if they come out of there and we ain't going to let nobody go in. Okay, we're going to see what God says. I got my eyes on what's mine. Then Asa took all the silver. Uh-oh. Asa, uh-oh, this, this guy here looking at everything we do. So he took all the silver and the gold that was left in the treasure of the house of the Lord and the treasuries of the king's house and delivered them to the hand of his servants and King Asa sent them to Ben-Hadad. ben -Hadad, I need you to come over here and help me. <laughs> ben -Hadad, the son of Tabernacle. He's talking about Basa, the son of Hazron, king of Syria, who dwelt in Damascus. Saying, no, he told, that's who he called Syria. He called Syria. God give you all these <laughs> names before he get to the person. And King Asa sent them to ben -Hadad, the son of Tabaroma, the son of Hezion, king of Syria, who dwelt in Damascus, saying, in other words, he sent to this guy that's over Syria. He said, I need some help. <laughs> I need some help. He said, let there be a treaty between you and me. He said, I need you to be my partner. And there was, he said, let there be a treaty between you and me as there was between my father and your father. See, I have sent you a present. I sent you some silver and gold. Come and break your treaty with Basia. I know you've been, you and Basia just like this. But break your treaty with him. I'll get and then and then come on here and help me. And so he'll withdraw from me. Money make, make, make people change their mind. Oh, I ain't hanging out with the Look at all that gold and silver that man sent me. But what the book of Chronicles said. Well, let me finish reading that too. So Ben had died, the one he called. He the king. Asa, I'm coming, man. I'll be over there. And he sent the captains of his army against the city of Israel. He attacked Aijan, Dan, Abel, Beth, Maka, and, and Shinarach with all the land of Nephtali. And that's a brother. One of Nephtali is one of the tribes of Israel. 
All right. So he went, he sent, he got that goal that he sent and he went. However, the book of Chronicles said when Asa picked up that phone and said, I need you to come over here and help me. God said, wait, 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 Asa, I like it that you, you get a star for telling your grandma to back off and took that queen name off her. I like it that you told them, them folk that you ain't following these laws that, that your dad had put in play. He said, but uh, uh, why are you calling on somebody to come and help my children? No, my, I gave them my, them my boys. Them, them my folk. I, I'm the daddy. He said, that part right there, I ain't playing with you. I don't like that now. He said, Ace a prophet. Now you got to go to Chronicles to get that. And said, thus says the Lord. You're wrong for that, Asa. And then Asa didn't like it. Told that prophet, you don't come here and tell me nothing at the time. All this stuff I'm going through. Lock him up! First King didn't tell us that. But God said, keep your eyes on Chronicles while you read First King so you'll understand. There's a little more detail in there. So I just want to throw that in. But we're going to stay where, where we are. And then when we get to Chronicles, we'll come back and say, oh, that's what God was saying. For whatever reason, he didn't put it in here. So Basha found out that, what that man named? Dab. Been a dad, been had dab, dab, D A B. Oh, been a dad had walked off and went over there and said, I'm going over there with Ace and help him out because Ace is a good guy. You shouldn't be doing that man like that. And plus, he sent me that seven gold. And so, Basa sitting up there watching them going in and out. Now, it happened when Basa heard it that he stopped building Rama and remained in Terza. He went back home and he got all them stones and all them trees cut. That he was going to keep his eyes on the on Ace of the good side of town. I mean, the better active people on town. Not, not, not the Big Ten. He's off and gone back to the hell. Then King Asa made a proclamation throughout Judah. He said, I need the church to come together. Well, I say church, but the people to come together. None was emptied, exempted. Everybody had to come. The rich, the poor, the black, the white. Everybody on, this, on his side. And they took away the stones and tell me, he said, I need some help. He said, you see all that, all that. Stuff that he got to try to keep us out. I'm going to need you to go build something good with that stuff. So all that he meant for evil, Asa said, we are taking to make something good out of it. And he took away the stones and timber of Rama, which Basha had used for building. And with them, King Asa built Geba, Benjamin, and Mizpah. He said, let's go get all that stuff that he left hanging around his ground. It's some good stuff. We just going to go make something good. That's how God's people are. He said, you trying to hurt me? Oh, I'm going to pick up all the stuff. That you, because you got to go home, and I'm gonna get the stuff that's good that ought to be used right. You already cut the stones. Thank you. Fine, I call you back. So all the good stuff, Basha had to leave. I'm going to the house, and he left. And then the Asa yeah, I need all Israel, the children, the grandmamas, the daddies, all y'all come help get this stuff and let's build some of this stuff. God fixed that. Now, remember, when we get to Chronicles, we're going to see God had to give Asa a little whooping. But he still said you're a good man, Asa. Don't mean that when God corrects us, don't mean that we're not in the good. Because most, a lot of people, God said, I can't find no good. But if I can find some good in you, I'm going to back you up and I'm going to whoop you if I have to. The rest of the acts, this is what the word says, the rest of the acts of Asa are all might. All that he did in the cities which he built, are they not written in the book of Chronicles? That's where your details are. When you see the word say that, that means go to Chronicles and see what he did. Uh, the kings of Judah, question mark. But in the time of his old age, he was diseased in his feet. All right, Asa in Chronicles got gangrene or something happened to his feet. See, when you go to Chronicles and you're going to see how Asa kind of like snugged at God. God let him live 41 years. But then the God told him, he said, now Asa, you could have called me and told me you were sick. He said, but you kept spending all that money trying to get you a physician to come heal you. They can't heal you. You quit talking to me. You, you didn't ask me about the war you wanted help with. And now you got a problem with your feet. And you, me and you like this. Talk to me. Talk to me. Let me know what you want. You want a husband? 
I'm just saying, God has said, if you my people, talk to me like I'm your daddy. But Asa sent up there with, with sick feet and wouldn't go to God about it. Now he did, I, you don't put your grandma out of church and told everybody she ain't the queen no more. You done took them signs down that, that, that we done protest and they made rules for his. You done did all that and now you need your feet fixed and you won't even talk to me. Chronicles give us that. That's why this word is so exciting. And so now that's Asa. So Asa died with his fathers and was buried with his father. He, he died. He rested with his fathers and was buried with his father in the city of David. His father, David, is still the one that they call father because they, that's David's grandson and his grandson and grandson. So coming on down. On David's side, they had one king. On the Big Ten side, they almost had ten kings. It was chaotic on that. We finna go to that side. God said, I told you, he said, brother, this stuff is com it's confusing to you. He said, it's confusing because it was confusing. But I wrote it so you can learn not to be confused. Don't join nothing that's confusing. Stay in the word. So Asa rested with his fathers and was buried with his fathers in the city of David, his father. Then Jehoshaphat, Asa had a son named Jehoshaphat. Son reigned in his place. I said, I ain't going to give y'all too much about him today. But let's go on the other side of town. We can go over to the, to the Big Ten side, the bad people. The people that, 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 that they ain't thinking about God, that change God dates and all this stuff. I, I'm going to call them the black folk because I let them be bad today. I ain't just call them somebody. Anyway, I, I, you got to talk. If we don't talk black and white today, we, we just fooling ourselves. So we're going up to the t t Big Ten. Now Nadab, this, God done changed this whole thing. Now Nadab, this, Nadab, the son of Jeho Jeroboam, the bad boy, became king of Israel in the second year of Asa. Look at God said, he said, when Asa was king, then on the second year, his second year, even though he reigned 41. But you remember when he was king the second year? We finna go all the way back in time and tell you what was going on. I got to bring you up to date, Bruno. Now Nadab, the son of Jeroboam, became king over Israel in the second year of Asa, king of Judah. And he reigned over Israel two years. God said, I need to pull the curtain back. Asa doing his thing. I ain't going to talk about it in the same time. I'm going to have to take you all the way back. So reverse and go all the way back 39 years ago. And I'm going to tell you what was going on. Because I got my eyes on all of it. He said, I know what happened 39 years ago. I know what's going to happen in 2021. I know how people are going to be walking and acting. And people still just like Asa. They would rather deal with the feet this season. Then ask me and say, Lord, what must I do? To humble myself to get this corona off, off this earth. We'll deal with our stuff the best way we can. We'll call on God. We'll let you know. Oh, Lord, this thing said my your Mac will be asleep soon unless you were plugging into an outlet. This thing, no one have mercy. Let me get my Bible. I ain't got a thing to be telling me that. Oh, Lord. And this is King James. I'm going to read it until it go out. Let me get ready. Computer, computer. That's why God gave it in a book. Cause he know if he had to put that word in, <laughs> he had to put that word in a computer. Lord, I couldn't read my battery went dead. He said, "Okay, I'm gonna put it in a book." Yep. So I got to get it ready as soon as the thing. I'm telling you, you need to be plugged up. What channel? Chapter fifteen. Sorry, y'all. I got to be ready. Got to be y'all so ready. Cause this thing might just go out on me. And then I'm going to be going back to the these and the thous because this, this is the use and the means. All right, so now we're back back in time. We're going back. We're back in 39 years ago, starting when Asa was king doing the right thing, putting the grandma out. But while he was putting the grandma out, on the, on the upside with the 10 religious people, churches, all them different churches, he did evil in the sight of the Lord. This boy named Nadab. Nadab. And he did evil in the sight of the Lord and walked in the ways of his father, and in the sins by which he had made in Israel. Uh, uh, Jeroboam was no good. And the boy that was Jeroboam, he, all Jeroboam kids ain't dead yet. But they, they died. Then Basha done woke up again, the one that was messing with Asa, the son of ah Ahijah, the, of the house of Issachar, all these brothers, Issachar, Nephtali, Reuben, Dan, all of them, everybody in the mess. Then Basha, the son of Ahijah, the house of Issachar, conspired against him. These are brothers. The woman 12 of them. 
The 12, the only somebody had to bring the word of God to the world was the children of Israel. God said, I'm going to make y'all different so y'all going to be a light to all these bad people. But now they said, we, gonna, we don't need you. So God said, now you bad. Then Basha, the son of Ahaja, the house of Israel, conspired against him. And Basha killed him. And Basha killed him. He went up there and killed Ahaja. Wait a minute, no, no, no. Basha, the son of Ahaja, the house of Israel, conspired against him. Conspired against who? Uh, 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 Jeroboam boy named uh, Nadab. He, he, he conspired against the not, uh, 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 Jeroboam's son, who was the king, for two years. Conspired against him, and Basha killed him at Gibbethon, which belonged to the Philistines, while Nadab and all Israel had sieged in Gibbethon. In other words, Basa, the one that was trying to mess with Asa, and came back up, he just got to mess with somebody. All them brothers now. And now he done killed that boy and guess what happened? Basha killed him in the third year of Asa, king of Judah, and reigned in his place. I want to be king. And now Basa said, I'm the king of the big ten. Rehoboam and all his boys now, they, they, they are dying or they're in the process of dying. But when Basha get through it, I think all of them going to be dead. And it was so when he became king that he killed all the house of Jeroboam. Just like God told him. He told that wife, that the pastor wife that came up there, I do that he's that blind man said, Girl, I know what you got on, and I know that you I know you ain't got on the right outfit, and I know that you came up and asked me about your son. He said, But I told your husband that he wasn't right and all he had to do was change, and now you here, and the Lord said they're gonna kill him and all his all his folk, and now it's happening. He did not leave Jeroboam alone that breathed, everybody in his family, until he had destroyed him according to the word of the Lord, which he had spoken to his servant Ahijah, the Shilonite. God is saying, I'm only keeping my word. He said, why we got to go down the street like that? Why, we, why, we, why you just can't be nice and do right? All I ask you to do is treat your neighbor right. But you would rather lie, deny, and die than to do what I said. He said, all this happened is because of the way you treat each other. I told you not to look at, at, on the outward appearance of your brother and, and determine whether or not he's worthy. We still do it. We still hate you. We won't, we're going to charge you more interest because you're black. We're going to build your house, but we're going to do it right. We still do that. But we want to be blessed of the Lord, highly favored. God said, no, it's not. Because the simple things I ask you to do, you can do it. Do right. Treat people right. Tell the truth. When you mess up, tell the truth. Be like, don't, don't hold your grandma in no position because, you know, that's my grandmama. He said, but is your grandmama selling sex toys? Because my grandma don't sell sex toys. God said, please, I think one was selling sex toys. Grandmama. That man said, well, good grandmama, you is not the queen. We doing that in 2000. Who you think own this stuff? Who you think the, that own all these sex toys? These people that got investment, who got the money? The folk that ain't spending on grandmamas. God said, ain't nothing new under the sun. He said, he had spoken his servant uh, Shelonite because of the sins of Jeroboam. Jeroboam started all these different churches. That's why people don't know my word. That's why you can go to this church and they'll teach you this. You go to this church, you can teach you. God said, that's why, that's why this, this guy started that. He is the father of religion concerning, since I brought y'all out of Egypt. I'm talking about that broke up my church. The only thing that I had going on was my establishment with Israel and Jeroboam came in there and screwed everything up. You want to be Baptist? You want to be Catholic? What you want to be? What kind of, what kind of preacher you want to be? Just pay your offering. Just give me your money, then I'll let you be, okay? He started that. And what guess what we've been doing ever since Jeroboam started? Who is the real founder of all these different churches? Jeroboam. Everything was, Jeroboam was working for God and God picked him. And he got that position, turned his back on God, and then had all them people to sin just like him. Because of the sins of Jeroboam, which he sin, and by which he had made Israel sin. So leaders are the reason why people are in sin. I wouldn't be no leader. Because you go outside and see all these hungry people and all this stuff, it's the leaders. You ain't doing right, so the people don't do right. Well, Brenda, you a leader. Then I need to change. I'm not excused. I got this book and I said, I'm going to read it to anybody want to hear. Which he had sinned about which he had made Israel sin because he, of he, him provoking with which the Lord provoked the Lord, made God upset and God of Israel, which with which he had provoked the Lord God of Israel to anger. He said, I'm telling you, anytime you do people wrong, make mad. 
said, people can't follow all them different instructions. They're not made like that. I had one assignment, and I gave it to Moses and said, hey, this is how we're going to live life. This is the game play. You didn't like what I said because it was discipline. You didn't like it. I said, you can have one wife. You wanted a thousand. And then you didn't think that sin was, was not going to follow that? Now, he said, your body, I made your body. I made it to be holy. It was made for one woman and one man at a time. And that need the one that you got need to be dead. I know there's some exceptions, you know, somebody sleep with another person, and I get that. And he said, but the truth, if, if he had listened to me, y'all could have been friends for y'all. But nobody won't pay me no attention. They think, they think my word is outdated. He said, I'm talking to 2021, 3,000 years early, that you get real good understanding of how to run 2021, because if not, you'll be doing the same thing these people did, and you're, gonna be, you're not getting anywhere. Now, the rest of the acts of Nadab, because he killed that boy, stayed there two years. And all, well, he really stayed, he two years, but close. And anyway, you get in chron Chronicles, I think they said one year plus a few months, somewhere around them. Now, the rest of the acts of Nadab and all that he did, when I get to Chronicles, I'm going to say it just right, then I refer back. I'd rather refer back than to try to go up because I don't like looking at the movie of the future, even though I understand I do it, but I'm just letting you know if you do it. Have Chronicles sitting here and have First Kings sitting here, and then you'll be able to see the two. I had to learn that, and now I was ready for what I got. But just in case we're going to do it better, we're going to line them up. Now, the rest of the acts of Nadab, the one that just got killed, and all that he did, are they not written in the book of the Chronicles of the King of Israel? Every time you see that, that means check Chronicles out to get the more details. So it's a little more details over there. And guess what? And there was war between Asa and Basha, king of Israel, all their days. So Asa is dead at this time because his son, Asa is still here, but Basha gave him a hard time even when he became king. All right, no, no, no. Okay, Asa is still alive because I forgot we went back 39 years ago. Basha has made himself king. He assassinated the guy and he took it. And so now him and Basha is over here and Asa is over here and they, there was a fight all the time. Basha kept doing what just kept fighting this guy now here we go now we, the camera is only on Basha now in the third year of Asa king of Judah God brings that back Basha the son of Ahijah became king over Israel in Terzai and reigned 24 years so this bad king he stayed in Basha stayed a uh, leader over there for 24 years so you got 24 years to be led by a leader that'll kill you in a minute and this is the people of God you can't tell these folk from the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Jebusites. Because when we walk away from God, we become absolutely nothing. And if we don't pray for our leaders and get our, especially our black men to get in our communities and start reading this word, we're going down for nothing. We have played with this book long enough. This book needs to be read. Because if you, if you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth, most of us don't read the word. We waiting for somebody to say something that we can say, amen, while we do this all the way through church. I can't do the Old Testament stuff because we ain't living under that. Yes, we are. If God was to take our lives and just without a date, we'll plug in right here. We doing everything except we do not have anybody in the government that'll call you out on these sins that's against God's word. We worse than these people. God's address is still here. And every year we, we, we do this. We go further and further away. And the further we go, we live in darkness. And now we have got so immune to darkness until we just think that everybody crook we just deal with. Are you supposed to give me customer service? If you find good, good customer service, you almost want to give that child your check. Because it's just that bad. People don't care. God said, the further away you get from me, the more you will get accustomed to living a life I never desired. He said, but if you come on back home, I'm going to show you how your life was supposed to be. I think this is the last verse. So Basha is in leadership. And guess how the word is this chapter? He did evil in the sight of the Lord and walked in the ways of Jeroboam. Jeroboam was no good. And in his sins by which he had made the people to sin. Leaders introduce sin to people. Teachers make bad students.
parents make bad children, leaders. Anytime you got a leader and they're not going by God's word, you setting your children to be just like you and they're going to be worse. So this guy, uh, the northern side got another king and nobody can quit. You can't raise no school jumping from school. Your kid can't learn if you're in this school this week and next week got to go to. That's how Israel they in this school, we got to go to another school, got a different that kid ain't going to learn like that. It's not set up like that. And that's how Israel was going. They had one teacher that was very experienced and very good and knew the routes and knew the ropes. And they said, we don't want you. You're too disciplined. God. So they went over there and, 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 and uh, our, uh, Jeroboam said, I'm going to start a Baptist church. I'm going to let people be whatever they want to be because I don't think people need to be just following up behind no one plan. And he said, then that's what you're going to get. And he said, this is the truth of the life without God. You need God to read this word because that's exactly what we look like. We look just like that. But you still got that little old church over here that say, you know what? I'm going to try to do right. I'm just, I, ain't, I understand they the big time folk and I understand they drive all the nice cars. I'm going to ride my bike. In fact, I'll walk with my cane. I'm going to be that old woman. I'm going to be faithful to God. And I might not have but two pennies or two little old dollars. But I declare to you that when you talk to me, when I put my offering in the table, you better believe I gave all I had. I know they don't listen to me because they think I'm outdated. They said, she's trying to take you back there in the Old Testament and God done delivered us from. My newspaper can match this thing to the T. I'm online. I see every sin under the sun. I said, how in the world did we get the Old Testament to be on the computer and people living it today in 2021? We don't read the word. That's what Jesus said. You're killing me because you don't know what the scripture said. If you knew what the scripture said, you would be killing me. I'm sticking with this word because I'm going to tell y'all something. I don't want to be separated from God. I figured to call the shots like he said and then anything happened, what you going to do to me? I ain't write this. I'm reading it and learning every day how to read the better. Y'all, I know where I got to go. There's one more thing I want to tell y'all. Can't think of it. But anyway, I would just tell you to pray for your leaders and call it like it is. Don't go in and say, Lord, bless the leader and Lord, bless his family. God, you know, protect him from the corona. That's not what we need to be praying. Father, in the name of Jesus, let your word be magnified. We bind everything that's causing my leader not to hear your word, see your word, or speak it. Give him the boldness to tell us what we don't know. Not just tell us, but to confirm what we're doing at home. And so that when we go to church, we can stop talking about his birthday and his anniversary and what he did and how many jokes he got and how many, wasn't he funny? And we're lost. And we still think we're going to meet you. We're going to meet you just like Jeroboam did. Not in peace. Raise up black leaders, God, especially for our black churches. Oh, Brenda, why are you not talking for the white church? I love my brothers. How could I not? But you, I don't live with you. You don't let me live with you yet. I pray that you'll stop that. I pray that we become one again, according to God's word. Read the book so you can't tell whether you're in a black church or a white church. We are hearing from God. And the only way we're going to hear from God, we got to go back into this word and find out why are we still in the Old Testament, not under the covenant that Jesus said I gave all that blood for. He said, my sheep don't act like that. My sheep don't scratch each other. They're led by me and I'm a good shepherd. Lord, raise up old women, raise up young women, raise up boys and girls. Do, your, do what you said you did. You said in the last day you're going to pour out your spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and your daughters are going to read this word. Prophesy means speak what you said. Not that scary stuff that we got. 
Wake us up, Lord. Wake us up. Wake us up, God. Wake us up. Tear down the titles that Jeroboam gave us. Bishop, the bishop is an action word. It's an adjective that describes what you do, not the title that you wear. We and somebody can call us the head napkin holder. And we are we 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 about seats to sit up there and say, you know, that's the napkin holder. Because we do that stupid stuff. God, dedicate, dedicate, raise us up, raise us up, God. Raise us up. We want to live with you. But we got to do it in our own home so we'll know what they expect when we go out shopping for a church or how to pray for our churches. God, we love these folks. We don't want to leave people that we've been, we've been with. God, they can change. But if they don't want to change, remove them, God. Put somebody there that want to see people grow. Our black communities finally, Lord, let a black man teach the word right without any a Jeroboamic behavior, trying to get money out of folks some old sneaky kind of way so he can still be the one recognized. Ain't nobody alive connected to Jeroboam. But the spirit of Jeroboam is in our black communities. Why? Because the evidence of the absence of you is all over the place. We're ignorant of your word. We can't even hold a sentence about who, who is Jeroboam. I don't know one church that ever taught me about Jeroboam. I heard his name, but we shouted so long until I forgot what they were talking about. Oh, Lord, my life. Lord, bless these people that's still here listening, whether it be one or two, whoever. Maybe they'll listen later. But I'll be that woman that will put their two mites in there. I'll be the one that gave all I had. I can't give you all I got, Lord. I'm giving you all I got. I'm giving you everything that I understand. I read this word so that I can share this word, God. Bless these people, God. Bless Facebook, God. Anywhere your word has been an avenue to get the word out. That we don't have to come in here and just play and, and just be foolish all day long. And then say bits and pieces that don't make no sense. Ain't the Lord good woke me up this morning. And we don't know your counsel. Lord, I was lost. But I was hungry. And you told me that if I hunger and I thirst after your righteousness, that you was going to fill my plate. And every day I get in this word. I breathe. I live. To just see who are you? Who are you? Oh. <laughs> You promised to take care of me, Lord. And I enjoy it. Bye, y'all. I'll talk to y'all later.